Hello. What? How do I? Mm. Oh. What's up, guys? We're back in the studio today. This is kind of like a trial setup with a little trial background. I've got like a little corner of the studio done. If you guys haven't been following along, we've been building out our basement studio. So I'll leave the link up here to the latest video, but there's a couple of videos in the series if you guys want to check it out. I'll leave all of the links in the description box. So today we're talking about production quality. This isn't really how to edit your videos better, but it's about how to make your videos look and sound more professional and have a higher level of production value. So everything looks polished and nice and friggin' tasty, if you know what I mean. So I've broken this down into three sections, the shot, the sound, and the branding. So let's talk about the shot first. There's a few key ways to up the production quality of your videos through the shot or through the lens. And these might seem really basic, but sometimes people just ignore these things in order to quickly get the shot. So the first thing is to make sure that you're exposed properly in camera. There's nothing worse than when you come back from a shoot and all your footage is blown out or it's too dark. And if it's blown out and you're trying to save the highlights and they just look really weird, or if it's too dark and you're trying to pull things out of the shadows and, and your shot is getting really grainy and starting to fall apart, it's really important to understand exposure and understand the histogram. Now, if you don't really know what the histogram is, we did a full like masterclass on it. So I'll link it up here if you wanna check it out. Chris did a complete deep dive into what a histogram is, how it works and how you can read it. And if you really don't understand exposure at all, the aperture, shutter speed, ISO, we made another video, link up here, about the basics of photography. They still apply to video. And the second thing is setting your white balance in camera. Getting a nice neutral shot in camera will make your videos look better. And in turn, if you do want to grade your footage, having a neutral starting point is really key to being able to get the most out of your footage. If you don't set your white balance and your shot is really, really blue, but you want a really nice warm tone in post, it's going to be really difficult to get that look. Okay, so these seem like obvious things, but I think it's important to talk about them because sometimes we think about one and forget about the other one. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is lighting. Lighting is really important. Now you don't have to have professional lighting here. You can still have a really nice looking shot with using window light. If you have the window hitting you side on, it gives a really dramatic light. If you have the window hitting you face on, it gives you a nice really even light. And that's a really nice flattering light as well. Lighting is really important. So instead of just setting up in a dark dingy room with, you know, ceiling lights, try moving towards a window. And the last thing in the shot category is your background. Picking a nice background will really help up the production quality of your videos. Some lamps in the background or some plants in the background. Moving away from things in the background will give your shot depth. A plain background also will look really nice, especially if you're focusing on lighting. Pick a background also that complements your skin tone. Me against a beige wall never is a good look because I'm just like, my skin just blends into the wall. So I like to use dark colors in the background or really blue whites. And that sets my skin tone apart from the wall and it's a lot easier to color grade. Okay, so next we're gonna be talking about sound and bad audio is the biggest distractor from videos. You could have the most beautiful B-roll ever, but if your audio sounds like shit, your video is gonna be shit. You don't really need to have like fancy sound treatment, although it does help. But if you get your mic close to the subject, that will make a huge difference. If you use a lapel mic, that will make a huge difference. And then the other thing is make sure that you set your mic levels correctly in the camera. So if your mic levels are too low and you try to push that up in post, you're gonna be raising the noise floor and it's just gonna sound shitty. Make sure they're not peaking because once it peaks, it's gonna be impossible to recover that audio. And it might be worth the effort to go and look up a couple of basic tutorials on how to improve your audio or the way your audio sounds. And sometimes just by doing some simple adjustments, you can make your audio sound really rich. Now I'm not an audio expert. I do try my best to make the audio sound decent in our videos. And now that also goes for balancing music and voiceover in your audio. So if that track is too high and it's difficult to tell what the person or the subject in the video is saying, then it's gonna get really annoying for the viewer. It's also gonna make the viewer struggle to hear and understand what you're saying. So make sure you balance the levels of your music with your voiceover. Okay, moving on. The third part in this video, probably my favorite part, we're gonna be talking about branding or graphics. Now, if you guys have been watching our videos, you know that I'm not really like into After Effects. I don't do a lot of title animations. So I keep it super simple with my titles and sometimes I'll go the extra effort into animating something, but adding nice titles and graphics to your videos can really bring it to the next level. Now they don't have to be complex. You don't need to know how to use After Effects or do any crazy animations, although that's always a nice touch. Here's one simple thing. If you wanna add a title, 
don't use the default font. Oh my God, there's like literally nothing worse. It's like type in a thing, leave the default font and it's like, okay, you just left the default font. Like the default font is like not good. There's so many amazing fonts out there for free that if you just spend a little bit of time looking for them, it's worthwhile having that font choice be consistent across all your videos. That creates a branded moment. People start to recognize that font with your look, and then you up the production quality of your videos by using those titles in all your videos. Okay, so you might be wondering, Becky, I don't know what font to use. I'm not a designer. Don't worry. I'm gonna share five sets of fonts that I really like that you can use in your videos. And you can also mix and match these as well. And I did a full video on branding, which is linked up here if you wanna check it out. Here are the five fonts that I found that you guys could use right away. Most of them are free. Uh, they're all free. They're kind of all free. Let's go over them. First font is Baybass. Baybass? Baybass? That's the name. This font is like a classic sans serif font. It's super blocky and big, so it makes for really nice titles. And actually, this is the font we used to use in season one of the vlog. Um, this font comes with a couple of different weights. The bold one is my favorite. Okay, the next font is Arvo. This is a nice slab serif font, and this comes in a bunch of different weights. So when you're making your titles for your videos, play with different weights and think about the type hierarchy. So you're doing a lower thirds title for an interview, say for instance, and you have the person's name and then you have the person's title below it. The person's name is probably gonna be a bit bigger, maybe a little bit bolder, and the person's title might be a little bit smaller. And you can play with the spacing or the kerning between the letters. I love a nice loose kerning. Like it just looks high end or something. It just looks good. Like it's really satisfying to my eyeballs. I love it. Think about that when you're designing type for your videos and you can do all of this right in Premiere. I like to do my titles in Illustrator. I actually did a video about that as well, like a number of years ago. There's no more, there's no more room up here. Everything, listen, all of these videos are in the description box, okay? Next up is Nexa. This is more of a classic sans serif font. This font family is actually massive. Uh, they only have a couple of weights available for free, but if you purchase a license, you can actually get all of them and they come with, there's like a shitload of weights. And I think they even have a version where there's like a number of different styles as well. So, oh, good Lord, I love typography so much. Okay, the next up is, how do you say this? Ber Bernier, Burner, Bernier, Burner, Bernier. This font is a super fun display font. It's actually very adventure -y feeling. It's definitely not the most timeless font choice, but it's a lot of fun and it comes with a few variations on the font. And when I say timeless, I mean like, if you're gonna make a logo with this font, it's probably not gonna last like five years. However, if you made a logo with the font Nexa, it might last even longer than that. So it really depends on the brand and, and what it looks like. Um, we're getting too deep into logos and we're just talking about graphics and titles for your videos. So the last font, Mir Mirage, I really suck at reading. This one is called Mirage. I couldn't give you a sans serif and a slab serif and a display font without giving you a serif font. And I love a serif font for maybe more serious feel, um, maybe more professional feel. A serif font has like hooks. A uh, sans serif font doesn't have hooks. No serifs, sans serifs, no serifs, no hooks. So I used a serif font for the main logo for Cold Island. And then I paired that with a sans serif font below with a nice loose kerning. So kerning means spaces between the letters. So when I say loose kerning, that means there's more space between the letters. When I say tight kerning, that means less space between the letters. So the bold weight in sentence case in this font is my absolute favorite. And the G, the G is absolutely freaking glorious. Like what a perfect G. I've never seen a G more perfect. Lowercase G. Yeah, yeah, so I really like the G. Okay, this turned into like a type, weird typography sidebar lesson. You can mix and match these fonts, but I don't recommend going more than two fonts unless you really know what you're doing. Having nice type, nice titles, nice graphics in your videos will up the production value of your videos. Now, if you wanna take it a step further and you know how to use After Effects, animating these titles will bring it a step further. If you're gonna be using these fonts for your own brand or client projects or even products, I really do suggest looking into the licensing for those fonts. You just you wanna make sure that you have the correct license for what you're using it for. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful for your next production or your next video, or even if you're just starting a YouTube channel and you wanna, you know, you're thinking, hey, I like my videos to look real good. Well, if you're just starting, don't put too much pressure on yourself, but those are a couple of ways you can help your videos look better. We'll talk to you guys later. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. I said that real fast. See you on the next one. Are you kidding me tonight?